Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Bill from AT Makers. I'm going to give you a quick update today on um, USB filters, where we stand on them, uh, what's changed, why we're stuck on some of the things on them, and then I'm going to give you um, some instructions on how to put together our latest, uh, mainly for the folks in Gainesville at Roaring Riptide, because they're going to be making some of these this summer. So thank you all to them. Um, thanks very much to the folks who took on the uh, the eye alert uh, meeting the other day. I could not be there. Um, I'm trying to get things back in order after being out. Uh, I do feel a lot better. Thank you for everybody who checked in on me. Um, <clears throat> I have a lingering sore throat, and other than that, I'm just fine. So let's get started with um, um, USB filters and what they are and why we care about them. Obviously, our most um, our most famous and success and successful um, USB filter is this one, which goes onto the IntelliKeys keyboard. It takes a non-standard USB um, keyboard, which is the IntelliKeys format, goes into this device, and then out the other wire comes a standard uh, keyboard. It looks so. This side looks like a standard uh, keyboard that you plugged in. The other side handles the weirdness that is the very old IntelliKeys. So when we first made this, um, so I guess we could start with uh, start with this. So this is the um, this is the actual board that lives inside of that um, adapter you saw. And you'll notice it doesn't say IntelliKeys adapter; it says USB filter. So this device actually can do a lot more than just IntelliKeys fil uh, um, adapting. It can do a lot of different kinds of filtering. And if you've seen me recently at the patents conference or things like that, you'll know we are using this more and more now. Uh, this is the original, uh, the original USB filter, the one that we use in the IntelliKeys. It's what's inside of that. And this is what Riptide has been making for the past, um, you know, for the past year or two now. So here's the device itself. It actually has two microcontroller boards on it. Uh, they're both Trinket M0s from Adafruit. They run on a SAMD21 microcontroller, uh, along with some, some basic power management and, and USB interface and uh, memory and things like that. Actually, I think this memory is inside the chip. But um, it's a very basic chip. They run between $8 and $10, depending on how many of them you buy. So with two of these, it costs about $20 for the microcontroller, maybe a little bit less. Um, you'll see there's nothing else on this board except for the custom PCB board that we made. We had made at uh, PCBWay in China. And uh, we simply solder these things on the board and, and they work. We plug in one side to the PC, the other side to the IntelliKeys or whatever else we're filtering, and this does the processing for us. Let's kind of explain how that works. Um, here's the PC, the tablet the Mac, or whatever else is, is we're trying to use the keyboard on. It's going through standard USB to an HID interface running on this Trinket M0. This Trinket is running CircuitPython, which makes it very easy to modify and tweak and make, make uh, serve our needs very well. It communicates between the two boards over these little wires you can see here, uh, through something called UART or um, just serial communication. And then this one is running Arduino because Arduino can be a USB host. So we plug in um, the IntelliKeys into this. This knows how to host an IntelliKeys um, uh, interface. And so this guy constantly reads the IntelliKeys. This guy is constantly talking to the PC. He'll say what's changed. This guy will send back what has changed, and he will send out the appropriate human interface standard mouse and keyboard interface uh, events. So that's how this device worked, and it really kind of works really well. Um, there's, not, there's not anything inherently wrong with the design of this. There are just some limitations in the hardware that cause some issues. Uh, so let's talk about them. Um, the cost is actually pretty good. It costs about $25. Uh, $20 for the two microcontrollers. And then one of the things that kind of sucks about this is that it actually requires a um, an on-the-go adapter or a very special micro uh, USB to USB printer cable. And that's what we use with the IntelliKeys. So 
it's between two and five bucks for those cables. So we're, we're right about $25 to make this. The cons, these are relative, nowadays, these are relatively uh, in, not very powerful chips, these SAMD 21s. So CircuitPython runs barely, it barely fits on the M0. Uh, it doesn't have really enough memory to run well. Um, so we're limited in, in this case, uh, this limits us to only supporting the QWERTY keyboard and the web access keyboard on the IntelliKeys because when we tried to get more like the, the ABC keyboard or the large keyboard, uh, we would run out of space on the trinket. Um, we also learned that OTG on, on the go adapters suck. Um, they're not standard, they, they tend to wiggle and come out. Uh, we, it's not really a good solution long term. And uh, this last one here is a sync reset, etc. These are two separate microcontrollers. They're powered together from the, the PC that's running them, but we regularly have to reset these in the right order in order to um, get it working when it gets out of sync. So we actually didn't have the ability for people to put little pins in there and reset this one and then reset that one. They get them in the wrong order and, and things like that. It, it, is, it is just about the fact that we're using two independent microcontrollers that sometimes need to be reset separately. But overall, this is a really good design. It works, it's been rock solid, we've got a bunch of them in production. Uh, some people have limitations with them, but we haven't had many of them fail as far as design goes. There's no wires, there's no jacks, there's really not, not a lot that can go wrong with them. And so we like this design. So this is the Rev1 two trinket design, uh, and it's been in place and working for a while. One of the big problems with it right now is getting these chips. The SAMD21 chips are very much a part of the uh, chip shortage. They were back ordered. I think they just got in stock like yesterday, so I think we can get them right now. But they have been very hard to get. Um, so that is one problem. Uh, and then these other cons over here are really the other issues with them. So what would we like this to turn into? We, there, in order to get rid of these cons and to improve this design, we would like to move to this chip, okay, to this design right here. So this is really what we want our Rev2 to look like. Um, this is a Cutie Pie RP2040 board. That's the Raspberry Pi um, uh, chip. You can't really see it on this one. I don't know if I have one that you can easily see it on because uh, I've used them all. Uh, but the chip is actually on the bottom of this, the, the RP2040 chip. Uh, this is the standard Cutie Pie from Adafruit. It is about $9. Uh, what's really nice about this design is we only need one of them. So you'll notice there aren't two chips anymore. There's one, there's one chip, and then there's a second um, USB-A female drive. And that means we can take any mouse or keyboard or anything, plug it right into here. We don't have to have any weird adapters or on-the-go cables. Plug the other one directly into your PC, and really, you don't really even need to have a case for this. You can just wrap it up in, whoops, wrap it up in electrical tape, um, and just have a, an adapting cable. So I like that design a lot, um, and it is where we want to go. And to be honest, we would like to be here now. Um, we would like to be using this design right now. So if we look at how this one would work, uh, the Rev Two which has one RP2040 in it. We still have the host over here on the left that we're trying to talk to the PC, the tablet, or the Mac. It talks USB into the RP2040 Cutie Pie board. That's this board right here, this square. And then this uses what's called PIO to talk directly to the USB jack. So we only have one chip that we're managing here. It has two cores, we could use both cores, or we could just have a task uh, that runs um, one after the other, you know, do a device task and then a host task. Um, the idea here is that this will run within one chip. The cost, obviously, is in half, so it's about $9. We only have, what, the MCU and the jack. I would bet we could get that down to $9 pretty easily. The cons are time, tiny USB or teeny USB, which is what we need to make this work, doesn't work yet. Uh, it, it, it doesn't have all of the mods needed in order to do this little PIO piece right here. Um, we've been waiting on it a while. Um, they're working on it. There's, it's going to take some amount of time. Once 
teeny USB works, there's a second piece that says CircuitPython. CircuitPython has to support USB host, and that's going to be at least another month uh, before that happens. So this delay right here is actually the big issue, is these cons. It's this delay. And right now we've got people who use the IntelliKeys keyboards, people who want um, a, um, a filtering mouse, like a, a mouse that removes shakes and, and tremors. Uh, and w w as much as we want to use this design, uh, we're going to have to put out some, um, some boards in the meantime. So we have a third design that tries to solve some of the problems. Let me kind of show it to you first. It looks like this. You'll notice that if you compare this to uh, the old two trinket design, it still has one trinket that talks to the IntelliKeys or, or it, it manages the USB hosting. It then uses an RP2040 for the CircuitPython work. And this solves some real problems. Probably the biggest one is, um, this chip has plenty of memory, so we can support all of the overlays of the IntelliKeys. And if we want to do more complicated filtering, like um, averaging or um, logarithmic filtering and things like that, this is more powerful and much easier to do than it was on the Trinket. Um, the downsides really are we still have to use an on-the-go or a weird cable. So kind of looking at how this works now, it looks a lot like the first one. The host talks to the RP2040, which is running CircuitPython. That talks over UART or serial to the Trinket, which is running Arduino. It's running the old, same old code. It talks USB to the device, whether that's a mouse or IntelliKeys or a keyboard. The cost is about $20, um, 25 actually total, same as the original one. Um, the con is the on-the-go adapter and sync and reset. Now, um, I did figure out a way to fix sync and reset in this design by using one of the spare pins um, over here, like one of the like A2 or A3, to drive the reset pin. So that when you reset this one, it would automatically reset that one. That actually will help, and um, I'm going to add it to the next release. But at this point, we're going to ship out some of these right here that people can use in the meantime. So I think that catches people up on on the different versions of the um, the adapters. So I'll kind of put them all together here. We've got the initial one, kind of the halfway point that's using the RP2040 for the CircuitPython work, otherwise working the same way. And then kind of the third one here, which completely gets rid of the second microcontroller and does it all on the single board. Now, um, I would love to get to this. To me, this is kind of a holy grail thing we've been working towards. Um, we are driving it on the software side, try, trying to get that done. But in the meantime, this is what we have working today. Now, as far as assembling these, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just like the originals, whenever you're using a trinket, you're going to get one that has a, a strip of headers that comes with it. You need to uh, cut those to length, five per side. Um, and have them ready to insert. Then you will place them into a solderless breadboard uh, right on the end, make sure they line up and that they're straight, and then solder them down one side, turn it around, solder it down the other, and um, it's only 10 solder points. It should be straightforward to put the headers on it. When you get done with that, um, I really recommend that you go ahead, especially if you're new to this, take a... Um, take a uh, continuity tester, your multimeter in continuity test mode, and go down each set of pins and make sure that there are no shorts between the pins. And since I had a lot of these to do, here's me in fast motion going through a whole lot of headers. To assemble the old style two trinket boards, simply insert the trinkets with their headers into the board. There's an outline showing you which direction that they go. Uh, once you've done that, lay them down and I recommend that you solder one pin first on each of them. What that allows you to do is you can then make sure that they're flush on both sides and that they're pressed down neatly. If for any reason they've they've you know tilted, you can then press down, re-wet that, you know, reheat up that one pin and it'll press into place, and then go back and solder all the other pins.
After you've soldered in all the headers, you're going to want to flip it over and trim all of those long headers. We don't need the length, and they're just going to get in the way. We're going to cut them off, but then after, and make sure you either wear eye protection, or you, in my case, I'm using a, um, a magnifying glass. Uh, those things will go flying, so make sure they don't hit somebody. Um, but after you've done that, what you do have to do is go back and use your soldering iron to, to basically reflow the solder around all the pins. The reason, and Steve um, Bowman gave me a lecture on this once, is that the act of cutting those can actually weaken the connection. By re-melting the solder just for a second, uh, it solves that problem. I do recommend it. It also makes it smoother so there aren't sharp edges uh, to catch on the bottom. Now let's take a look at the newer boards, the ones that have the cutie pie and the trinket on them. And you'll notice that the first thing I do on these boards is I actually cut out the little connecting line on them. Um, on some of the Cutie Pie boards, the chips on the back get in the way of that strip, including the RP2040 board. So I've cut that off here. When the next revision of these come from China, not only will it fix the reset problem, it'll also have that strip removed. So you're not going to need to do this modification. Uh, by the time I send you any boards, they'll already have this update. But I'm gonna, not going to throw away the boards I have. I'm just going to go ahead and cut them carefully with a pair of clippers. With that done, I'm going to now solder up the um, cutie pie. And this is not going to use the headers for the cutie pie. It's going to directly solder the pads, uh, the castellated pads of the uh, cutie pie, onto the pads that I've placed on the custom board we have here. Uh, to do that, first step is to place some solder on one of the pads and then place the cutie pie where you want it to be, position it cleanly, and reheat that solder so that you can get it exactly placed where you want it. When that solder cools, it'll hold that in place so that then you can do the other pads. With that first pin in place, we go to another pin that's further away, in this case all the way down on the right. We start adding um, solder. Make sure that you heat up the pad, and the, ca the castellated pad, and the, the underlying pad. At the same time, add in your solder and make sure that you, in this case, fill the hole. That's how you know you've got enough solder to hold it in place. We'll go ahead and do the rest of the pads here. You'll notice that when we get to the first pad that we had tacked in place before, we will add enough solder that it is going to be a good connection and will hold just like all the other pins once we're there. Now we flip it around and do the same thing on the other side, going down and soldering all the pads down. Just like with the headers, you can use your continuity tester to test both whether or not you have shorts between the pads, but also you can test whether or not you have a good connection between the pad on the cutie pie and the pad on the board by just touching them together and making sure you have a good tone. Now we'll place the trinket on the other side of this board and uh, place its, its um, headers through the holes. And just like we done on the original board, we'll solder one pin in place Make sure that that's nice and neat and straight and that it's not popping up. And then go back and solder all of the other pins. After a quick inspection and maybe a continuity test, we're going to go ahead and cut those pins uh, short, the header pins short, and reflow those back just like we did on the other board. That's all there is to it. You've got a perfectly working board ready to go. You just need to program both sides and it'll be an adapter. So the last stop on this uh, journey here is to program the chips. And there are two chips on this, so you're going to have to program both sides of it. Um, in this case, in, in both cases of these two, which are ready, um, one of them is running CircuitPython, and the other one is running um, Arduino. Now, in this case, I'm going to <clears throat> just walk you through programming the Arduino side of one of these. You'll understand that it's the same for all of them, and it is pretty straightforward. Because I'm going to make an IntelliKeys adapter out of this, I'm going to go to the iKeys adapter um, GitHub page. I'm going to go under software. And the first thing I'm going to get is the Arduino side, the keyboard side. And I'm going to download this UF2 file. Okay? I've already downloaded it here. Locate, locate it right here. IKey, iKeys kbd.uf2 file. And that's what I'm going to load onto this, this board in order to make it work. Um, to do it, it's pretty straightforward. You plug in your um, 
the side that you want to program. In this case, it's the trinket. I'll plug it in, it'll light up. You'll see, in this case, it came up with a little circuit pie um, drive. That's not really what you want for programming, and sometimes that won't show up on some devices. So what you want to do is you want to double tap this, um, this reset button. And when you do that, you'll see the circuit pie goes away in a, in a device here called Trinket Boot shows up. All you've got to do is take this iKeys keyboard file, drag it onto Trinket Boot. This will now copy it over, reset the chip, and it is now programmed. It's all you have to do to program it. When you want to do the other side, you'd grab the CircuitPython file, the UF2 file, and you'd copy it over as well. Now, on the Cutie Pies, we may have to have a second step there to copy some additional files over. Um, but if you're just doing the trinkets, that's all there is to this. So that's all I've got for this update. Um, it is a very exciting area for what we're doing. Uh, you're going to see a lot more USB filters coming out. Uh, the most exciting new one coming out is going to be the mouse, the tremor removing mouse. Uh, that requires a chip like this or one like this. It won't work on the old kind, but um, I'm really excited about them. I think it opens up a lot of possibilities for things we're going to try and do. And these are pretty well tested. If, you, if you're looking for a way to take... USB in on one side, do some kind of manipulation to it, and pass USB back out. Uh, this is a really good design. So, thanks for your patience and uh, your attention. And as always, have good luck and have, I forgot my own tagline, good luck and have fun.